Welcome to another episode of HTL, the Here to Listen podcast. Today, I'm joined by award-winning singer-songwriter, Nuello Charles. If I want it, gotta know I'm worthy, worthy to be somebody, somebody to be loved. On her self-titled album, the Juno-nominated artist brings a mix of empowerment and vulnerability to the forefront affirming the star she really is and inspiring others to step out of the shadows and into the spotlight while embracing who they really are. Please welcome to the show, Nuella Charles. Hello. That was really <laughs> nice. Oh, <laughs> it's true. You know, it's quite empowering, right? Yeah. I have to tell myself that every day. <laughs> No, that's it's hard sometimes, right? Because you put out you put out this work into the world, and it's like, is it resonating with people? Is mm. it just resonating with me? Um, and you do really get vulnerable on this album. Yeah, I tried. I, I think with everyone, every record I put out, I want it to actually say something and like have my own specific meaning, but have it be universal enough that others can take something from it as well and make it their own. Yeah, what was that message that you wanted them to to take from this this record? I mean, like every song is is different, but it was just kind of like you're you're here, you're you're alive. Like make it count for something, you know. Like yeah. make your one life count for something. Um, however, that it is you want to live it, chase after it, you know. Chase after those wild dreams and ambitions. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to be 60 and be like, man, I wish. So yeah, that's kind of what I want people to take out of it. Well, it's worked for you, right? Pursuing your dreams. And you start off the album with that song Alive, which is a great track. Thank you. If I'm still breathing, I must be alive. It got, I don't know, it kind of got to a point it being in the industry for so long that it's like, do I even like doing this? <laughs> you know, is this even something that I want to continue doing? Because it's like 10 years is a long time to do yeah. anything, yeah. Um, let alone like be in the music industry in Canada. And so when it came time to writing, it was like, how do I feel in this moment? Can people relate? Um, but yeah, just kind of telling myself that you got this, you can keep going, or you can say, hey, I had a good run. Let me try something else. So yeah. You can also take a break for a while, right? And I feel like yeah. I can relate to that where even with this podcast, I haven't released an episode in a couple months, and I just needed time to refocus on the direction that I wanted it to go. And I've I've been doing, you know, hosting and interviewing and producing for yeah, over a decade a, as well. And so it does there's there's little lulls where you're like, do I really want to is is this resonating, you know? But I find and I don't know if you find this as well that you always come back to it. Yeah. Right? It's like it's like it's meant to be and even if you try to push it away because of maybe rejection or because you feel like it's not resonating and you're like, am I really you know, meant for this, yeah. no matter what the, it always, you always get brought back to it somehow. Right. Yeah. I spent the last year on like a self-imposed sabbatical and yeah. <laughs> it, I'd still, it was my most profitable year ever because wow. of like syncs and stuff and my music being placed in music or my music being placed in, in uh, television and commercials. And it was just like, well, if that isn't a sign, you know, like maybe yeah. I just needed some rest and yeah. like that, like you said, recalibration and just like retuning my vision and what it is I want to put out there. But it was definitely like, you can still do this. Like your music means something out there and, you know, people are listening. So it was really encouraging. Um, but the break was nice. To yeah. Not do <laughs> sometimes you need nice. that you know yeah. and that's how you build inspiration too right your day-to-day yeah. -day life and um it's interesting because I actually heard you for the first time while on a plane from Toronto to Vancouver they were playing it on the overhead before 
the flight. Yeah, before the flight went off, and that oh, wow. I shazammed it. I took up my phone and I shazammed the song, <laughs> and it was worthy, oh, which is nice. one of my favorites. I love oh. that song. I'm like, this needs to be like on every radio channel. <laughs> like, it needs to be out there because I mean, obviously the messaging is is great, but like just the sonic, sonically the sound, it's like ear candy. <laughs> I, yeah. I love that song worthy. And that's how I discovered you. And um, it is resonating because I, I just heard little bits of it right over the, yeah. over the loudspeaker. And I'm like, Oh, this, this hits home. Oh, thanks. Yeah. It's always random where like, I'll get people in Walmart being like, I hear your song with like their phone <laughs> up in the air. And I heard it once in Walmart myself. And I just kind of stood there. I was in the garden section. And I was like, oh this is my song and then like an associate came up to me they're like do you need help with anything i was like no it's my song and he just kind of looked at me he's like okay lady <laughs> everyone has a song like it's fine <laughs> yeah he's probably just thinking oh this is like her favorite track and yeah. she's hearing it all it's like no no like i'm the one singing this yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny <laughs> do you remember the first time that you heard your song on the radio I yeah well hmm, the first time I remember when it went like uber like super not um, national and it was on the CBC and it was I think like 2012 or 2013 and it was my first album and I submitted it for like the CBC searchlight competition mm -hmm. And they played on Fortunate Love. And my, f I was, I had an uh, office job at the time and my phone was blowing up. And I thought somebody, something happened. And I was like, oh my God, what's oh, going no. on? And everyone's just like, you're on the radio. He's talking about you on the radio. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and so it, it was super cool. Just like being able to hear it and have them talk about it. And I think that's kind of where everything started kind of slowly happening and people were paying attention so that was really cool yeah and, and it, it's resonating with people and you said that you were doing an office job at the time mm -hmm. when you when you first heard your song on the radio what what advice would you have for someone that's maybe trying to pursue their passions but they're also working you know their day-to-day -day job and paying the yeah. bills and you know what advice do you have for them yeah i mean i think it's like work until you can make it work until you can make your dream work. And I started off full-time working in offices to doing administration. And then as stuff started picking up and I needed to travel more, it's kind of hard to be like, Hey boss, can I get a month off to go on tour? You know? And yeah. so they, they, my first boss, he was like, sure. You know, like I, our summers were really slow. And so I took a lot of unpaid time off. And then when it came to like more like awards and conferences stuff, it was like, no, you kind of like you've used up all of your days. So I was like, okay, well, looks like I have to quit. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up quitting that job. I think I was there for like three years. Um, but then I transitioned into um, temporary work. So I worked with a, an office and they had temporary placements whenever I needed it. If I was too busy with music, um, I would just like write those days off or whatever. So it was really great because I had income during the winter months if I wasn't doing anything. Um, but then I also was had that flexibility of really pursuing my dream. And I think that if you can find something like that, that allows you to, you know, make money <laughs> while you're not making any money doing music, um, is this really, really helpful. I loved it. You know, yeah. it was that t t period of time where I was so engaged in what I was doing and passionate that it was, I was going to make it work. Um, and I feel like I was a lot more, uh, what's the word? Uh, not pessimistic, optimistic, <laughs> the opposite <laughs> of what I am today. <laughs> I was a lot more optimistic back then. It's like, it's going to work. It's going to work. Um, and there was just that drive that, you know, I'll stay up until two in the morning filling out this grant application, if that means 
I have the possibility of making an album. So it's, you just got to do what, what you got to do, you know? Mm -hmm. What, why do you think that you're more pessimistic now? I'm tired. <laughs> and I think that was just part of like taking the break of like, I, I got to a point where I felt I was just running like this hamster wheel, doing the same thing over and over again, like write songs, make a record, release it, try to promote it. No one's listening. Cool. <laughs> write more songs. And then everything's changed so much that I remember when I first started having songs on film and television, like that equated to sales on iTunes. Like the, I had one on like a VH1 show and that night I sold like 1200 singles, you know, wow. but that doesn't happen anymore. It's like, they'll go stream it, which is great. It's like that shift that I've watched happen throughout my own career is like, what do I have to do now? Nobody knows what we're doing. We're all just trying stuff, <laughs> throwing it at the wall and see what sticks. Um, so it was just, it's been a long journey and yeah, I think I'm getting back to why I started in the first place. And like you said, like, even if we take a break, we, we somehow find our way yeah. coming back to it. And when I started picking up my guitar, which I always have it out, but when I started picking it up and just like writing casually for nothing, just casually something inspired me. I was like, oh, maybe now it's time to really start getting back into it. Um, and seeing what happens without forcing anything, um, yeah. which has been really nice. hundred percent. And do you ever feel like the cards are stacked against you a little bit being an independent artist? I think so. I think I used to more so than I do now. Mm. And I think again, that's with that industry shift. I think before it was like, man, you needed that label to help you get to the masses. But now there's such a shift where even the artists who are on major labels are leaving them to be independent artists because it's like the value isn't there as much as it was before. And if you can own your own rights to your music and still, you know, create your own online community, um, it's like, why am I giving away everything to get back nothing in a sense? Yeah. Um, there's still a need for the labels when you're looking at like those major, major artists who drop something and it's worldwide all at the same time. Um, but I think for us, it's like we have that freedom and that creativity where there isn't someone saying, well, maybe you should try something else or, you know, you're your own boss. So let's go back a little bit. What was your childhood like growing up? Yeah, it was it was different. I mean, we traveled a lot. I was born in Kenya and then we lived in Switzerland up until I was uh, just after kindergarten. So I think six years old. And then the family moved to Canada because the dream was to be cowboys. And so <laughs> we lived on a cattle ranch for seven years. Wow. And so like that whole time of like going from grade one to grade seven was like living on a ranch. We had horses, um, our own house. We had like chickens and pigs and sheep and rabbits and just everything. And then we had a whole, like you just look out our backyard and it's like a valley and like just, it's like Yellowstone, you know, like a valley and just cows, just like, and just as far as you could see, just like green grass and trees. And it was awesome. It was looking back, it's like, wow, I wish I could live there now. Um, but it was so far removed from anything I do now. Um, but there was always music in the house. My dad had an acoustic guitar. Um, and it was just one of those things that I always saw, but never really did anything about it. Um, but then when we moved to the Bahamas, so grade eight, we moved to the Bahamas cause the ranch got sold. Um, we, I really, it's a very vibrant culture very musical, very, everything is like, like just, there's always music going on. And so that's where I picked up the guitar and started teaching myself and really learning how to write bad songs. <laughs> and then like the, the Mac book came out, the little white one, mm -hmm. you know, and started recording ourselves. And it was just fun to experiment, but that was my high school was 
you know, just teaching myself and learning and being like, wow, maybe I want to be a musician. Um, Because before it was, I want to be a computer scientist. (laughs) Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I really like tech, as you could, you know, like I really liked that that world and it was fascinating. But yeah, I think the creative arts um, really spoke to me and that's kind of where it started. And do you have your own family now? No, I'm super single. Oh, yeah, super single. Same (laughs) girl. Same. (laughs) It's like, I think the thought of having kids right now, I like, I talked to to my friends about it, and we're all kind of artists, and we're just like, I can never. Like, and right now, as the economy is, like, how are, like, we're never home. Like, it's just, it's hard to imagine. but you never know. You never, you never know. know. You know, yeah. you just got to find the right person to support what you're doing. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I have my own, like my family family. Of they course. They call me yeah. enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, how would you describe your perfect person? Like what kind of traits would they have? Oh, I don't know. I always say I just want a manly man. <laughs> yeah because like (laughs) it's funny because like i i go out to the farm so i'm at the farm most weekends and i'm literally shoveling horse shit so (laughs) it's like that juxtaposition of like city girl you know noelle charles of the junos traveling doing all this fabulous stuff and then she's the one mucking out the stalls at the farm, <laughs> being humbled real quick. Like there is no fanciness out there. Like they're Hannah like, Montana. Oh, exactly. It's like <laughs> grandparents are proud of what I do, but they're like, that's nice. And my uncle is the first, he's real quick to humble. He'd be like, okay, here's a shovel. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's like, Come back from the Junos. Here's the fork. Go, hey, something. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. Like, I love it. But someone who can take that. Okay. But I'm not worried about it. It'll come when it comes. It will come when it comes. And we're yeah. looking for a manly man who likes to travel. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it can take some shit from yeah. me and the horses. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Well, we're putting the vibes out there. Okay, thanks. I- I'm I'm looking for, I'm ready for a professional hockey player. That's what I'm. Nice. That's the vibe that I'm going for, you know? Yeah. That'd so. be nice because then you can travel to all the games. Exactly. Yeah, yeah do my own good. thing. I'll have my own show. Yeah. You know, I will, we'll have kids at some point, yeah. him and I, and we can take the kids on the road too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. We're manifesting that. And, um, yeah. you know, I, I, you talk about, affirmations or or, you know you are you are in this on this album you really do incorporate the affirmations into Mm -hmm. the songs and the interludes and all of that and so is that something that you incorporate into your your everyday life as well I think I used to because I remember you know when I was said like I was more optimistic back in the day I remember (laughs) during that time it was like anything that I was doing like I was filling out a grant application or whatever. It's like in my mind, I already got the funds. It was, this was just a formality. Like I had that kind of sense of con, I guess it's confidence, but just like, it's going to happen. Like there's no way it's not going to happen. And going through life like that, everything happened. And it was like, wow, like all these things, all these awards, all these prizes, stuff that really helped me continue. Um, And like the three Juno noms back to back, which was like crazy, um, was just, that's just the mindset that I had. And then I think I just got either old or tired and it, it, the cynicism kind of crept in. Um, And I think it's also just like seeing your friends not accomplish the same thing. It's like, it's hard sometimes because you're like, ah, you want to celebrate the wins, but at the same time, you don't want to feel like you're rubbing it in people's faces and it's just like why is the industry so unfair like and then you just get all these thoughts and then that side of me kind of went away and i realized that a couple of years ago i was like man i'm not as optimistic or like 
it's already mine. Like I wasn't in that mindset. And so slowly getting back into it. Keep up the the affirmations, I think, and just continue to really push yourself. Maybe listen to this album again, because, you know, it could be really you speaking to yourself because you really do have that star power. And uh, hearing this album, I was like, why haven't I heard this before? Like, this is so good, you know, like, why isn't everyone talking about it? And I just, I'm sure you felt the same when you released it and everything. So just keep up that momentum because clearly you have the talent, right? Yeah. And I kind of like, cause I had a, it was, this was like, when I talked to myself about it, it's like, this is the best work I've done. Um, I know that my family knows that my band, like we all know that yeah. I had like so much money behind it in terms of like marketing and had like full team, like here in England and France, like every, just like everything was in place for this record. But I think it was just the timing was so off because it was the September as every like last September. So everything was slowly coming back, like not September 2022. Yeah. And so stuff was slowly coming back open, but it's people were still hesitant. Um, tried to do like little private events for the, the album, but it was still like kind of hit and miss, you know, with press and stuff. And people like outlets were closing down, people were losing their jobs. Like yeah. it was just timing and everything. But at, at the same time, like I still listen to this record. It's like I listened great. to it on the plane back <laughs> like yeah. yesterday. Like it's it's so good. But yeah, I think it's now just continually to push it out. And like just because I released it a couple of years ago doesn't mean it's dead, you know? So it's just yeah. starting to really get back into promoting them and sharing the songs and what they mean and all that stuff. So hopefully that more people will be able to hear them. This deserved even more attention than it did. And I feel yeah. like all the critics loved it, right? And everyone yeah. loved this album, including yourself. It's just like getting people to to listen, right? Yeah. Which is hard when like people devour singles and like yeah. even not even the whole single, the sped up version of a song. Yeah. It's like, is this what we're doing now? <laughs> That's what it is. Another song I love on the record is Awakening. Mm-hmm. This is an awakening. Yeah. <laughs> It's so good. It was like stuck in my head after I heard it a couple of times. It was stuck in my head. You know, can you touch more on what that song's about? Yeah, I think it's just like that inner, like, you know, I've been talking about just like going from being super op- optimistic to like kind of like, mm, like the cynic, the old person in the room. Um, <laughs> it was kind of that, like letting my light shine again and like, you know, just realizing that I am the star, yeah. um, not in like a vain way, but like we all have this thing about us that is unique and important and people should see that in us and we should celebrate that in each other. Um, and it was just that like, let let that shine, like nothing's gonna hold me down. Um, and then just making it kind of like this anthem cause like being a woman in the industry is really hard. Um, and then being like a, a black woman on top of it is like even harder. Um, and so for me, it was like that little last bit was like nothing stronger than a woman. Um, mm-hmm. Really was just something that came out and was like, yeah, that's sick. Like, let's yeah. use that as like the ending mantra of it. But yeah, it was just my own little like, come on, you got this. Yeah. <laughs> kind of vibe. So yeah, I'm glad you like it. Have you already started on the next project? I started writing a bit more with my producer, but nothing specific for the project. And I have like a, a bunch of voice memos that I was yeah. starting to sift through now and really just see what sticks out and see what direction I want to go in. But I don't know. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> It'll come to you. You don't want to yeah. force it, you know? Yeah, exactly. Is there something that most people don't know about you? 
Ooh. I don't know. I think the whole farm thing is pretty like left of center. They're just like, what? <laughs> and like my friends know, but they're like, I can't, they're always like, I can't imagine you like mucking out a stall or like being with these like, because my grandparents have two stallions that they use, they imported from Germany. And so it's like, or like being around these massive horses, it's like, and I'm not terrified, you know, like a lot of people are scared yeah. of horses and I'm just like, they're my babies, Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it's like, just that's normal to me, but for some people it's like, wow, it's crazy. What's something that you would tell your younger self? Probably that it's all worth it. It Well, yeah, that you're going to make it in a way that your turn, your definition of making it is going to change through the years, but you're going to get to a place where music is your income and music is your livelihood. And don't worry about the rest of the stuff. Just keep doing what you're doing because no one's going to get it but then everyone's going to get it and then you'll be fine. <laughs> my big thing always was like, people would ask for advice and like, I'm like, who am I to give you advice? But the one thing I can tell you is don't stop. If you really want to do this, you got to keep going. And that that's great advice that can be applied to really anyone in, yeah. in the situation, not just in the creative sphere. So thank yeah. you for that. My final question, and I ask all my guests this, is if you had a movie or book made about your life, what would it be titled? Oh. Oh, I don't know. I watch a lot of sci-fi, so it would have nothing to do with that. I feel like me in space or something. Um, <laughs> my title... Probably like some some old song, like Awakening or like something to do with like, I'm still here or still here or just like the idea of persistence and keeping going and not quitting. Because I think that's, yeah, I think that's kind of the track that I'm on right now is, yeah, you know, you're going to keep going until you're going to stop. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and unless someone's gonna make me stop it's not gonna happen anytime soon you know so yeah I think just that need to continue on continuation no that's 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 dumb um I don't know something in that vein that's a great title thanks well thank you for coming on the show it's been uh really nice getting to know you more and learning more about you know your sound and what's next and your past and your future and all of that it's it's been a really great time like chatting with you today so thanks for coming on i really appreciate oh, it thanks for having me who knew that a random like airline song shazam <laughs> would lead us here <laughs> exactly i'm so grateful for that uh, you know that porter airlines flight that was playing which worthy. is so random i've never flown porter in my life and so I don't know who is in charge of like picking this music, um, but I'm grateful. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm really lucky to be able to do to do this and yeah. to have encounters with people like you who get it <laughs> and make me feel like, oh, OK, I can keep going. You know, you can. You yeah, will, so. too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you again. Thank you.